So, doing an, another little video on a topic that um, I like to keep an eye on. Uh, I still feel all these years later it's still developing. Uh, the Essex Boys murders. Um, don't want to go on too much about all of the main stuff because it's been done to death. Um, but what does interest me is the, the new material which um, is leading to a new appeal launch for Jack Wyoms and Michael Steele. Uh, I find it very interesting that their defence have now been issued with unused material uh, that was never disclosed to them at the time of the trial. Now, for those of you that don't understand the court proceedings, when you get arrested for an offence and you, gave, you give your version, you basically go to court and the prosecution, by law, have to disclose to you all used and unused uh, evidence. So the used evidence is what the... The, the prosecution have picked out of all of the evidence to try and prove your guilt. All of the unused material that they're not using to help prove their case that they don't think is relevant is then passed over to the defence for them to pick through because it may contain something that the defence believes it can prove the innocence uh, of their two clients. Now this unused material that's been found puts the, um, the data from the mobile phone, so the cell site data information in doubt. Uh, for me, I've been involved in cases in the past where I've actually gone to court and I've had the judge actually screaming at the prosecution saying, we're back in court for the third, fourth, fifth time. Why have you not disclosed this unused material? You're not using it, so what is the problem? Hand it over to the defence. Now, for me, this isn't done for one reason. One, it undermines the prosecution's case. And two, uh, it could be detrimental. Detrimental to the, to the case. Because um, it could help prove that... The, the, Jack Wyoms and Michael Steele's innocence. Now, when this happens in a case of the, the magnitude of the Essex Boys murders, in my view, it means the conviction becomes unsafe because when you start giving out life sentences uh, for murder convictions and all of the evidence was not disclosed for the prosecution to the defence, it, it makes that conviction unsafe. It means that the jury based their decision on part of the facts and not all of the facts, whether they're relevant to the case or not, if the, the prosecution think they're relevant or not, that the defence still have the legal right to see that unused material and see if it's relevant to their case of proving their client's innocence. Um, I want to put it on record now that I believe next year, 2021, I firmly believe that the convictions for murder um, against Michael Steele and Jack Wyoms will be overturned. I find it very difficult to believe that a court of appeal would declare this conviction safe, um, seeing in, in the manner in which this undisclosed evidence has been found um, and also what it contains. Um, so uh, if you're interested in the Essex Boy murders, Keep your eye on it. Um, I don't think the appeal has gone through yet, but I believe it's in the works. Um, and I firmly believe it will lead to them um, being let out of prison. Now, there is bonuses to this. If they was to serve their sentences out for the murder and then get released, part of their license conditions would be uh, non-profit for their offences. So no books, no nothing like that. And also uh, not to talk to media. Um, that's also a big thing on, on a license for a high profile case. If the convictions are declared unsafe and they're overturned, none of them restrictions apply, which is absolutely amazing because now in this day and age, it's not like when they was convicted, now we're in a, an age of podcasts and interviews and YouTube, and it would be absolutely amazing to get their versions of events. Also, it's been um, uncovered recently that there was a gentleman, you can, you can research this, but um, I can't remember his name. Um, I think it's Billy Moore. Um, I might be wrong, but I think it was Billy Moore. Um, can't remember exactly the connection he had to the Essex boys, but he was going out with a lady, uh, married to a lady, and the night the Essex boys were murdered, he receives a phone call at home and he promptly asks his wife to leave the room. Now, he's been on the phone for a, a few hours. Um, so some would say that, and she overheard that they, they was talking about Pat Tate, Craig Wolf, Tony Tucker. Now, for me, this is, this is a key moment because the offence has just taken place and someone's on the phone talking about it. So I, I think at that point it hadn't even been out in the press yet because they didn't actually get discovered until the following morning. So for me, that's very relevant in a court case. Now, what makes it even more interesting is that shortly afterwards, the wife fled this Billy Moore, she fled somewhere, started up a new life, and I think it was a year later, um, again, you can check this, 
the woman's car was found with her shoes and her handbag. She's never been found. So you read into that what you will, but my perception on that is she knew something that they didn't want to get out. So I think even though it's an old case, um, there's a lot of new stuff coming out, so keep an eye on it. Drop your views in the, uh, in the text below. I'd love to hear your comments on it. Any additional information that you're aware of, let me know because it, it really interests me. Um, and let me know. Tell me what your thoughts are.